Here's an idea. Idea Channel is a show about pop culture that takes seemingly unserious things very seriously. Every episode, Mike prepares a script, delivers it quickly, and combines it with funny graphics. Well, in the last episode, he talked about Netflix shows, right? Yeah, I mean, what do you think the follow-up will be? Along the same lines or something totally different? It says here, Terrace House is the let's play of reality TV. Just not how you think. In 2015, in its transition from plastics distribution to international digital media, Netflix launched its own reality TV show. Working with Fuji Television in Japan, they funded the rebirth of a Japanese reality slash dating show called Terrace House. The long and short of it is that three men and three women live together, and we, the audience, watch who crushes on whom and how everyone deals with their various emotions. Set in Tokyo, the show was successful enough to be extended from an 18-week season to a 46-week season and inspire a Hawaiian spin-off. Every episode reminds us that Terrace House is... If you've been both alive and near a television in the last three decades, you've probably heard about reality TV, often premised on variations of a social interaction theme. Paradigmatic examples include CBS's Survivor, ABC's The Bachelor, E's, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, and even the OG standout MTV's Real World, which just finished season 32. That is not a joke. Being serious right now, 32nd season, I am old. Terrace House is like none of these. There are no confessional interviews, no tasks, no eliminations, no goals. On the show, the contestants, cast members, I don't even really know what to call these people, the housemates never acknowledge the camera. They go to school, they have jobs, friends, and relationships which are rarely, if ever, shown on camera. And when someone leaves, it's because they choose to. It's just some young people living together, sometimes going out on dates, often but not always, with one another. Writing for Polygon, Justin McElroy says that Terrace House fixes what is broken with reality TV by, quote, simply letting actual humans be delightfully, heartbreakingly human. Curiously, most of the Western journalists that have written about Terrace House struggle with explaining why they enjoy it, which they do, and I do too, it's really good, but writers at HuffPo, Fader, The Verge, they all use phrases like addicting precisely because it's so boring, or finding meaning in mundane human interaction. I think those things are only part of the story though, and that there are some other things about Terrace House which are quietly very effective, and also say lots about a potential future for the place of audience in media. And that potential future does have something to do with Let's Plays, but we're gonna work our way there. First, I wanna explain how Terrace House is actually, hold politely onto your butts, two reality shows. So the six housemates are on screen for only about two thirds of each episode. And the rest of the time is dedicated to the panel, the people you saw explaining how the show works. Three comedians, one model, an 80s pop star, and a high school student. Three women and three men, just like the housemates, introduce and recap every episode, but also speculate as to motivations, pass judgment, and generally just crack wise. In short, they do exactly what you expect from a reality TV show cast. But more so than a second cast, they're also a surrogate audience, albeit a professional and highly charismatic one, that helps the Netflix audience make sense of Terrace House. You can think of like Talking Dead, but part of the show itself. And also more significant in at least two ways. First, for Western audiences, the panel helps unpack the housemates' actions and even intonations. They do deep readings of household interactions and their scrutiny is one reason the show is seemingly about the details of everyday life, just an everyday life that Western audiences might not readily grok. Second, and this starts to get to the heart of why Terrace House is good and indicates something about audience, the relationship between the panel and the house can get complicated. Episodes of Terrace House are released shortly after filming, which means housemates 
can watch themselves and see how the panel reacts. And if producers film housemates watching themselves or the panel, the panel can see it. Friends of housemates often comment on recent episodes. Sometimes housemates watch previous seasons to see how stuff goes down, and new housemates arrive who already know about their roommates from having watched the beginning of the very season that they are on. This is ultimately what we're after. Terrace House's graceful, matter-of-fact adoption of meta, and how that adoption might presage some larger media shift. But just to be clear, TH's meta-audience influence isn't its theme. The theme is adorable, polite people falling in love. It just so happens to occur with three layers of audience, one of them recursive. Which is to say, the Terrace House panel is different from Talking Dead, Talking Bad, even Mystery Science Theater 3000. Those have audiences watching an audience discuss media they both just watched, but those panels are ultimately uncoupled from their source in both time and influence, or at least so it seems. By incorporating multiple layers of interacting recursive audience, Terrace House establishes itself as a kind of meta culture. It echoes the rise of Let's Plays and maybe even shows us where television and media is headed. Interesting. I'm glad he's bringing up Let's Plays, but I don't see the connection yet. He's gonna need to talk about sports commentary, right? That's an audience for the audience. Clearly he's gonna reference some theorist. Ten dollars says it's Zizek. Twenty. Let's cover some bases here, because no one likes uncovered bases. What does it mean for something to be meta? The easy answer is a thing that concerns what it itself is. Think XKCD's I'm so meta, even this acronym. Anthropologist Greg Urban attempted to figure out in detail how this idea applies to culture as a whole in his 2001 book, Metaculture. Imagine you have two entities, he says, A and B. They can be individuals or groups, and you want to track the flow of culture between them. Since culture itself is immaterial, it has to be carried in some material form. A show, a book, a dance move. Urban calls this material the letter alpha. So A produces alpha, B receives it, and then produces their own new material inspired by it. That new material is called beta. The movement of alpha from A to B is the movement of culture. B copies alpha by making beta, and that's the reproduction of culture. But A might not pass on just alpha. They may also pass on judgments about alpha, what it's for, how it should be used, etc., etc. Urban calls these judgments Alpha, except like spelled out. Yeah, it works a lot better written down, so we're gonna call it Aleph. Aleph is the meta culture of Alpha. Judgments about how Alpha should be received, culture about culture. Applied to Terrace House, if the six members of Terrace House are the show, then the six members of the panel are the meta show, the Alpha and the Aleph, the material expression of culture and the ideas about how that material expression should be received in the same material expression. But wait, you may be saying, finger pointed cleverly because of how clever you are, does the panel stop being meta once it's part of the show itself? Could it all just be alpha? Can you even have an alpha that has its own Aleph built in? What does this make this episode of Idea Channel? Is this another Aleph? Maybe Aleph about Aleph? Or maybe just beta? I have been called that before. Maybe that's what they meant. To get our bearings, I think it's worth considering Let's Plays, videos where someone records themselves playing a video game. Let's Players often are just as focused on their commentary as the game itself, as well as their audience who is watching alongside. For our purposes, Let's Plays here also include streams on YouTube and Twitch and etc. A big difference between Let's Plays and streams is that one is live and the other is recorded, but still both have multiple layers of audience. The player as audience to the game and their audience, and the at-home audience as audience to both the player and the game, and increasingly game publishers as audience to the whole thing, feeding what they learn back into the design of games. So we might ask, are all of these elements separate parts, alpha, aleph, beta, and so on, which stack and interact with one another while maintaining their relative independence, or did they cohere 
into one alpha, one material piece of culture. My gut says that there's more cohesion than not. I don't experience a stream or a let's play as many independent elements interacting, but as a whole. And likewise, I don't watch Terrace House as the audience member for an audience for a show. I simply watch Terrace House. But it makes me wonder about the purposeful collapse of the space between Alpha and Aleph, culture and metaculture, media and judgments about that media. Beavis and Butthead, MST3K, and even shows like Talk Soup feel like potential starting points where professionals play at being audience members for laughs. Talking Dead and its ilk, another step, where pros earnestly effuse as audience for popular television without a script. Let's Plays and Terrace House additional even further steps where the at-home audience is engaged directly and or the pro audience is somehow factored in to production itself. Far from being revolutionary, Let's Plays and Terrace House are artifacts of the slow progression of material culture consuming and incorporating the actions of its own audience. However, both may indicate that such a collapse is increasingly common, so it may be worth paying attention to how that coagulation works, lest we find ourselves in the sunken place. A cynical view of all of this would conclude that something like the Terrace House panel co-ops the authentic audience experience. They model my behavior and let me know what I should be laughing at, which relationships I should root for, and so on and so forth. And there's echoes of this in the critique of Let's Plays, too. Doesn't someone else playing a game preclude and replace my own experience of that game? To which I say, eh? A more generous analysis examines the critical value of metaculture. Greg Urban explains that he first got interested in metaculture when returning to the States after months of research in Brazil. He was struck, he said, by how strange and vivid everything seemed, even his hometown, his friends. He explains that anthropologists call this an Edetic return, and it's thought to be one benefit of travel. You re-imbue your surroundings with new attention. It's interesting to think about this, having just returned myself from a vacation in Japan, coincidentally. I can't help but wonder whether Terrace House gives its own tiny Edetic return. Not the housemates, but the panel. Spending time with them as an audience, I return to my own friends, the Terrace House themed text message group that I have with a few of them are conversations about the show over drinks or social media, and I'm confronted with a vivid difference between the two like my audience's relative amazement at the recurring insistence that all of the women of the house do the cooking in comparison with the panel's relative silence on the matter. Now, is this something that I want from every piece of material culture? A built-in surrogate audience which may inspire an edetic return to my own? Probably not. But are there places where it's welcome and perhaps valuable? Definitely. And will we see it more in more mediums and with more influence as time passes? Maybe. We made it! It's nice to know that we're the alpha and the olive of this show. Is that what he was saying? There were so many A words. Uh, we should probably ask, what does everyone think? Can a piece of material culture incorporate its own metaness? And does the kind of meta audience in Terrace House or Let's Plays help you better understand the audience you're a part of? Let us know in the comments, and Mike will respond to some in next week's comment response video. In this week's comment response video, we talk about your thoughts regarding our model media and whether or not it is the Netflix series or the epic streamable series. If you want to watch that one, you can wait for the end card to show up or find a link in the doobly-doo. Double extra special thanks to Matt from Spacetime, Anna from Gross Science, and Vanessa from Braincraft for uh, being our panel this week. If you want to watch their shows, uh, we will also put links to those in the description. But let's be honest, you probably already do because they're rad. So, I mean, yeah. PBS Digital Studios is doing a network-wide audience survey, and they would love to hear from you. For those of you who have done it in the past, you sort of know what you're getting yourself into, but we would love to hear from you again. And if you haven't ever filled out the uh, audience survey, it's pretty quick. Just some questions about, you know, who you are, what you're into. We'll find a, you'll find a link to that in the description as well. We have a Facebook, an IRC, and a subreddit, and there are two tweets of the week this week. The first is from Jason Hentrich, who points us towards um, All Star, but it's a Schoenberg, uh, um, string quartet which is blows my mind and uh might be the best one of these at least you know for someone like me um and uh also from chaos no kamisama um a link is sort of talking about how conflict works in the universe that tolkien built that includes this line that i really like so i'm just gonna read it 
Tolkien's ethos is not that good will always triumph over evil, rather it is that good is locked in a constant struggle against evil, and that victory is far from inevitable and always temporary. Nonetheless, the fight is still necessary and worthwhile. And last but certainly not least, this week's episode would not have been possible or good without the very hard work of these adorable, polite people.